What's happening in the Middle East, and in particular with Gaza right now, we have some moral responsibility for both sides uh, in, in a way because we provide help and funding uh, for both Arab nations and Israel. And uh, so we definitely have a moral responsibility, and especially now today, the weapons being used to uh, kill so many Palestinians are American weapons, and uh, American funds essentially are being used uh, for this. But there's a political liability, which I think is something that we fail to look at because too often there's so much blowback from our intervention in areas that we shouldn't be involved in. You know, Hamas, if you look at the history, you'll find out that Hamas was encouraged and really started by Israel because they wanted Hamas to counteract Yasser Arafat. And you say, well, yeah, that was better then and served its purpose, but we didn't want Hamas to do this. So then we as Americans say, well, we have such a good system, we're going to impose this on the world. We're going to invade Iraq and teach people how to be Democrats. We want free elections. So we encourage the Palestinians to have a free election. They do, and they elect Hamas. So we first indirectly and directly through Israel help establish Hamas. Then we have election. Then Hamas becomes dominant, so we have to kill them. You know, it, it just doesn't make sense. During, during the 80s, uh, you know, we were allied with Osama bin Laden. And uh, we were contending with the Soviets. It was at that time our CAA thought it was good if we radicalized the Muslim world. So we financed the madrasa schools to radicalize the Muslims in order to compete with the, with the Soviets. There's too much blowback. There's a lot of reasons why we should oppose this resolution. It is not in the interest of the United States. Yeah, Hamas was actually begun um, in the 1980s. It was begun um, with some, I mean, this is standard, you know, unclassified information. It's not a state secret. It was begun to some extent with the support of the government of Israel, ironically enough, because they wanted, they thought that a a religious-based organization would weaken the PLO, which they viewed as their main enemy. One of the other misconceptions that uh, Americans, Israelis, and Westerners have made for quite some time is this idea that, you know, religious religiously based organizations in the Middle East, and really we're talking about Islamically based organizations, that these people are all, you know, kind of not sophisticated, they're, 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 they're primitive, uh, they, they don't really understand modern politics, they don't really understand how to, how to uh, you know, use, uh, use the microphone to attract support and so on and so forth. So they're more easily manipulated and dealt with than revolutionary movements. نعم هذه غرة بالقرب من ربما استمعتم إلى هذه الغرة في المبنى الذي يظهر الآن في الصورة وهو تم يعني إبلاغ يعني أحد الآن محدود لازم ننزل عدنانها الآن بخير إذا كنت معرض لخطر يمكن أن تذهب الآن لأن أنا أرى القصف يعني في مواجهة المكان مباشرة تحذيرية Oh, oh, oh. Adnan. يا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله مربع كامل في حي الشجاعية تم استهدافه This is what this war on children looked like. This is eight-year-old Shaima. When Shaima's family home was attacked, she lost her right leg and her right arm. I don't know if you can hear the bombs outside this hospital, but as I speak, this will be happening to other children. We will soon see other children come to this hospital just like Shaima, suffering just like Shaima. That will continue until this war on children stops.